So I got arrested for stealing a complete set of encyclopedias. I told the police, hold on, I can explain everything. Mike with Ice for Gaming here with today's World of Warcraft gold farming guide video. And today is yet another transmog farm. This time we're in a dungeon. So once again, if transmog is not really your thing, uh, this might not be the farm for you. But don't worry, I've still got you covered up on the channel with plenty of non-transmog farms as well. The thing to keep in mind with transmog is that it can take a long time to sell. But when it sells, it usually sells for a very good amount. So it's something you have to be patient with. But uh, if you are patient and have a bunch of them up in the auction house, you need to have a lot of them to get regular sales. So you have to really commit to it and uh, you have to be patient. But if you if you are able to do those two things, transmog can make you a ton of gold. It's not something I recommend for a beginner, but if you're at that point in your gold making journey, it's definitely something you should consider. That being said, today's dungeon is on Kalimdor in the Ashenvale zone, and we are at the Black Fathom Deeps. You guys know me, I'm not one to BS you. I, a lot of gold makers use clickbait and they over exaggerate. I try not to do that. I try to always back up what I'm saying with proof. Uh, so I fully went into this farm expecting it to not to be as good as other people say. There are uh, some other gold farmers that call this the quote unquote 100,000 gold dungeon. And I was uh, actually intending to make a video debunking that. Um, and I definitely didn't make 100,000 gold, but Right now, uh, for for my farming so far, I'm sitting at about 49,000 gold per hour. Uh, after about a half hour, I've done uh, done six runs. Uh, I, I'm moving a little bit slow because I'm doing other things and I'm recording and whatnot. So you could probably do it a little faster than me. But so far in these six runs, I've made about 25,000 gold per hour. So it's coming out to just under 50,000 gold per hour. So definitely not 100,000, but I don't know. 50,000 is still really good too. You're wondering why my druid looks so terrible here. It's because he's got his speed set on. Speed sets were nerfed pretty heavily with uh, with Dragonflight coming out, but um, for my speed set, I right now I'm using Gonk Outrunners from BFA along with the Heart of Azeroth. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, I've only got 154% move speed in cat form. This used to used to be like over 180 with this set, but it was nerfed pretty hard. So speed sets aren't as essential as they used to be, but they still will definitely help you out if you can build one. With that being said, I'm just going to go through my route real quick with you guys. So in case you decide you want to do this farm, you can do it for yourself. And this is the route you're going to want to take. You're going to... Oops, I accidentally went into Moonkin there, but you want to uh, go through the water here. Don't bother killing things in the water. Uh, it just slows you down, and there's not that many of them, so it's not really worth it in my opinion. Just make sure you kill all the trash along the way here. That guy will run away from you. And then when we get to this big room, we are going to immediately go to the northwest into this little cave underwater. Obviously, if you're a druid, you're going to have an advantage in this dungeon. And uh, while you're doing this dungeon, keep an eye out for chests. There are lots of locked and unlocked chests. So if you have uh, keys or a character that can lockpick lockpick it's a good idea to bring them we're not going to kill the boss back there we're, we're not going to kill those last couple of mobs because they don't drop any loot and then we'll come back to this big area here and kill the turtle and then we are going south down this passage right here killing all the trash along the way here here's a unlocked chest here we'll grab it uh, and then we are on our way moving right along killing all the trash we're going to ignore the tentacles they don't drop any loot uh, unless you get into combat with them, then you might want to kill them real quick. But other, other, unless they pull you into combat, they're a waste of time. Skip them. Catch up to this guy. He's a uh, treasure guy. Kill him. Don't kill the boss straight ahead. Then we're going to backtrack and head down towards the end of the instance, killing these guys along the way. We're ignoring the guys that are running because they don't die anyway. And then we come to this boss here. We'll go ahead and kill him. The crab will run away. Keep an eye out for chests in this area. There's usually one uh, up on those platforms. One of these two platforms usually has a chest. So keep an eye out for that. And then we're coming down this way, finally killing that boss that's been running for from us the whole way here. And then on to this last room here where we are gonna kill this boss. And then we hit this little uh, pi uh, brazier pirate pyre thing and it will spawn a bunch of these shambling, uh, shambling guys here. 
And we definitely want these guys to spawn as it will dramatically increase the number of kills we get per run. And um, the reason we're not killing all the bosses is because they these guys don't spawn if you do. So that is one of the reasons why we don't kill the bosses. They also don't really drop any loot, so they're not really worth it. What happens when a microscope bangs into a telescope? Kaleidoscope. 